if you have like a cart like full of rocks or something like Joe probably has a cart full of rocks and you're pushing it up a hill, right? If you have to push it up the hill once, it doesn't matter if the cart has wheels or like squares on the bottom like old Flintstones cartoon. But if you have to push the cart up the hill a thousand times, then me being able to convince you to put wheels on instead of squares is going to be a lot, it's an easier argument for me to make because you experience that strain. And that's the same thing in jiu-jitsu where it's like, I want, to, I want everyone to have wheels, but it's hard to describe what those are until you have the experience of struggling to push this cart up and you go, there's an easier way to do this? It's like, yeah, you got to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Okay, you try it, and the edges, like you cut off the corners of those squares, and they're like, what is that, an octagon or something like that? Mm -hmm. Keep cutting the corners off, and eventually it rounds off into wheels. And that's sort of the process of jiu-jitsu of uh, drilling and sparring, and then drilling and then sparring, and awareness and movement. Increase your awareness, that adjusts your movement. The movement, your experience during the movement, the feedback you get from that guides how you change your awareness back to movement and just keep cycling around and that's what I'll say from time to time like I, I think it's experiencing jiu-jitsu is really being able to ask more useful questions from yourself and answer them so that you can rely on your own problem-solving tools to move ahead instead of uh, you know if I had to like call Jiva every time I had a thought in jiu-jitsu that I needed answered um, I'd be on the phone all the time. <laughs> so the, the, there's a couple things I was noticing um, in sparring that were going really well. That was, that was good. A lot of people were getting in or they were getting the position started that they wanted and also working their way into the cross face position. Okay, that was all looking pretty good. Now if I get into here, I get this cross face. One of the things that started to come apart though was at this point trying to free the right leg up to the ceiling. Okay, that's not only for the pass, but when I go to the quarter guard, if Chris takes his left hand and is pushing on my knee, and I drop my head right by his head, there's a point where his arm won't be long enough to keep my knee in his quarter guard. Now, if I've been like this, and I'm trying to go to the quarter guard and bring my leg through, look at Chris's arm here versus here. He almost can't make contact with my leg. So as I make my way through on this point, very easy to get through. Okay. So once you have that cross face, walking the foot in, unfolding the knee, just like the cross knee pass opening, unfolding, then going to the quarter guard, will make it so the partner's hand will still be on your knee, but they won't be able to keep it contained in that, in that half guard or the quarter guard. Usually people do that in there. I laugh. Any thoughts on that? Any? Let's see. Travis, you're going to be passing on Joe. Um, did you start? If you want more videos, please click below to subscribe. If you want to dive in deeper, you can click here to get a free video seminar I did of one of my favorite sequences uh, from standing to submission. And if you have any questions or anything you want to see, please leave it in the comments below.